Today we are making some Dollar Tree DIYs inspired by anthropology. Hi there, I'm Allie and welcome to my channel. I have some really fun projects that I'm sharing with you in this video. I love how these Dollar Tree DIYs turned out. But real quick, before we get into the first project, I do want to say that this is a collab with the lovely Make It With Mia and I'll have a little bit more information about her after the first DIY. For this first project, I'm using four of these Dollar Tree cube drawer things and I'm hot gluing them all together to make a row. You could use wood glue, but I was impatient and didn't want to have to wait until it dried. So I used hot glue and just made sure to really squeeze the boxes tight together to minimize some of the gaps that it would create. And in order to fill it in and make it look nice and seamless, I did go in with a little bit of some wood filler and filled in all of the little cracks and crevices. Then to smooth it all down, I took a fine grit sandpaper and lightly rubbed along the wood filler areas. And then I used my favorite early American wood stain to stain all of the wood pieces and I just did this off camera. Now that that stain is dry, I'm using these leftover tiles from a really cool tiled tray that I did last year. And the first step is to remove all these little silicone pieces that hold the tiles together in the tile sheet because you want these to be nice and seamless for this project. What's great about these tiles is they are the perfect size for the front of these drawers. Like it is like they're meant to be. So I figured out my arrangement of the tiles and then I used a combination of E6000 glue and hot glue to attach them all to the front of these cubes. Next, I decided this still needed a little something, so I added some wood beads to the bottom to create some feet on the bottom of this. And I also took some smaller wood beads and used some more of that wood filler to fill in all of the holes in them because I wanted to make some knobs for the drawers. And then off camera, I stained the feet and the knobs with that early American stain and then glued on the knobs using E6000 glue. I think this would make such a cute little jewelry organizer or I even thought that this could be used for organizing my different types of teas or craft supplies. The possibilities are endless, but I think it looks so high end. in the beginning this video is part of a collab with Mia over at make it with Mia we are doing the same thing she on her channel did some more high-end store inspired DIYs using Dollar Tree items and if you like my channel and the type of DIYs that I do here then you will definitely love her channel she does a little bit of a mix of a modern farmhouse kind of boho type style that is just so on point so definitely head to the description box check out the link to her channel and go give her some love on her video with all of that being said, let's move on to the next project. Okay, I have been so excited for this project for months and I finally had the chance to do it. I'm using two of these Dollar Tree Tumbling Tower games and you will need two of them for this project. I know these are sometimes hard to come by, but I found them all in my store and I was so excited when I did. Now this is the arrangement that I'm going to do. It's three pieces horizontally and then four pieces vertically and that is the pattern that I'm going to be repeating. And I simply used some hot glue to glue all of the pieces together in this shape. I do recommend using like a Gorilla brand hot glue. I used regular hot glue during this process and the bond wasn't quite as strong as I would have liked but I had run out of the Gorilla hot glue. So that is just my little word of advice, or if you want to use E6000 or something stronger, but I wanted to, of course, cut down on the dry time. My completed structure here consists of five of the horizontal rows and four of the vertical rows, and that would make one side, and you wanna make three more of these because I'm turning this into a really cool lantern. I'll pop my inspiration photo on the screen, not an anthropology, item but i feel like this is something that you would see there it's just very very cool and boho looking to add a little extra security i did go over each of the little cracks between the blocks with some hot glue 
And then to start assembling this, I'm using some Dollar Tree wood cubes in the corners of two of the sides. This will just add a little extra stability when piecing it all together. And I just formed it all together with some hot glue to make it look like a rectangle. To add a bottom to this project, I'm using two of these Dollar Tree wood planks. I traced the lantern onto it and then used my utility knife to cut them down to size and hot glued them onto the bottom of the lantern. This next step is optional, but I did have these really small square dowels in my stash and I figured this would just kind of clean it up a little bit in the joints that you see here. So I just cut them down to size and added some hot glue and stuck them into place. Next, because I wasn't a huge fan of just this natural wood color, I decided to give it a whitewash by watering down some acrylic paint. And it did take about two coats of the whitewash to get the color I wanted. And I also did make sure to whitewash the blocks from the inside as well. As the finishing touch, this lantern needed a handle to really complete the look. So I just used some Dollar Tree nautical rope and some of the jute twine and wrapped it around the little folded over part like so on both sides of the lantern. And that completes this awesome project. And I'm so glad that I finally made this and it's just so cool. For this third project, I'm using one of these Dollar Tree metal wire baskets and I decided to spray paint it black just to minimize the shininess of the gold, but you could skip this step. Next, I'm using a whole bunch of fat quarters in various colors and black and white. And the easiest way to trim these down into very small strips is to make a small little cut and then you can pull along the grain of the fabric and it will rip into a perfect strip. And this is just so quick and easy and way better than cutting it because I also wanted it to have a little bit of the frayed, not perfect look for this project anyhow. This is actually a really great fabric if you have a lot of fabric scraps that you hold on to or smaller pieces of fabric. I decided to buy new fat quarters just because I had a very specific color palette in mind. Now we're gonna be turning this into fabric twine. So I'm using a little hot glue to join this black piece with the colored piece and I'll be alternating the black and white pieces on one side and then all of the colored pieces on the other side. Then what you do is you twist the fabric and you wanna make sure that you twist the fabric, both the black piece and the colored piece in the exact same direction. Otherwise, this project's not gonna work. And at first I thought the easiest way to do this would be to completely wrap the entire piece of fabric first and then begin doing the rope braid. But I found out it's actually easier to twist and then make the rope braid. And all you do to make a rope braid is take the left side, pull it over top of the right side, and then that would put that on the right. And then you take the other piece, you twist it, and then you wrap that over the piece on the right side. I hope that makes sense. Once I reached the end of a color, I just used some hot glue to attach a new piece to the end and continued on my way with the rope braid. Once it's all done, and this is a bit of a time consuming process, you will have a pile of rope twine just like this. And then I brought in my wire basket and began hot gluing the rope twine down. I made sure to glue it all the way around the bottom for the first couple rows and also add a little extra hot glue from the inside of the basket to secure these bottom rows in place. But once those were secure, you could easily just take the rest of the rope and begin wrapping it up the basket. At the midway point where that cross section is, I also did add some more hot glue. That would just add a little extra security halfway through and then continue to wrap it all the way up the rest of the basket. I secured the end in place and then I'm gonna use one of these little chain hooks that actually came off those Dollar Tree wire hanging planter baskets. I've been saving these in my stash and I just clip that on to the different sides of the basket and that completes this hanging planter. And again, 
And don't forget to check out the link in my description box to head over to Mia's video so you can see the amazing Dollar Tree DIYs that she did. And if you haven't already yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any time I post. And that's all I have for you in this video. I'll see you on my next one. Bye.